All right, settle down, everybody. This is Kevin from Kevin's Corner, where I try to make sense out of nonsense. And I've been trying to wait a while to come and weigh in on the whole case of the young black man um, who was killed, unfortunately, while apparently jogging, Ahmad Alberry. Now, of course, uh, we know that the media has now gotten involved and they are mixing a lot of stuff up when it comes down to this, see, politicizing it. And now we got this big tear in our country. Um, we got some conservatives that are saying, um, hold up. Now, what I'm going to try to do in this video, and I say, you know what, Kev, you know, here it is. This one of them situations where I'm seeing people being divided all up into little slices and dices and stuff like that. We got some conservatives that are saying, let's wait till all the details come out. We got some conservatives that are saying, you know what, from face value, it looks like it was a racist act or it at least was a stupid act. Um, then we got um, people on the right, left rather, who are saying that this is obviously racist and, and so on and so forth. Um, and then we got other people who really, in my opinion, um, have a position of influence, but not the wisdom and knowledge to weigh in because all they do is muddy the waters and, you know, they add fuel to the flame like LeBron James. And this is why I didn't want to even have to weigh in on this because I knew it was going to turn into exactly what it is. I mean, I've been reading some opinions when it comes down to even some black uh, conservative commentators. Some say, man, this is a clear cut case of, you know, murder or racism, then you got some saying, well, now, before you jump the gun, get all the details, because it looks like this man might have brought some of this on himself. You got a whole bunch of stuff. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to share a practical, reasonable, balanced approach to what happened. My first thing is this, whenever a murder occurs, before you say this is exactly what happens. You probably should take a pause and say, you know what? I'm going to wait until all the details come out before I give a definitive um, statement on whether who's right or wrong. Wait it out. You don't want to look stupid in the end because, see, when you go back through the history of some of the most iconic so-called uh, black people getting murdered in the last 10 years by the police and stuff like that, well, initially, some stuff come out. People get mad. News media jumps all over. Politicians weigh in. And it ends up going to court. And come to find out, some of those people got themselves shot. It's that simple. Michael Brown got himself shot. There were some other people got themselves shot. And then, they never retract this. They never reissue all the details of the case. They just leave a large portion of Americans mad at each other and give fuel to people like LeBron James, Cop Callan, Capper, Nicks, and all of them to go out and make these stupid statements that are not backed up by data, information, facts, nothing. These are impulsive, emotional statements that further divide the country. So before you weigh in and start a riot or something like Jesse Jackson did uh, when he went down to Ferguson talking about this here was an assassination. Using language like that does not help. Starting riots and people tearing up their own city without all the facts doesn't help while you go back to your cozy spot. Now you take LeBron James. LeBron James weighs in on this and he lives in probably a nice cozy spot. Um, but yet he says, we're literally hunted every day. Every time we step foot outside the comforts of our homes. Now, to make a drastic statement like that, you probably want to support that statement with some facts. But this man can't because, see, he doesn't have to worry about that stuff. He's LeBron James. He just throws this stuff out there as if soon as black men walk out their house, then folks are sitting posted up in trees sniping us all over the place, walking around like, er, there's another one, Earl. Yeah, let's get them. Now, as you observe the behavior of black men walking around in the United States, does it look like they're sitting back scared because they're being hunted? Do you think that they're like, oh man, we all got to stick together because they hunting us. You understand? 
I see black men walking into Walmart confident. I walk around confident. It's not saying you can't have something stupid happen to you, but to say that this is the norm, this right here is taking place on a large scale. I haven't heard of a questionable shooting like this in quite some time. So therefore, according to LeBron James, we should have at least 50, 60 of these type of shootings a day. That's what we should have. If they're being hunted every single day, they step out their house. Are these the worst hunters in the world? Are they like Elmer Fudd? Uh, be very quiet. I'm hunting black man, but he can't aim and shoot straight. I don't understand. So for him to make this statement, to take advantage of an ignorant group of people who, yeah, man, I feel you, dog, and not even realize that the biggest threat to black people, black men, or other black men, then what you're doing is you're being a hypocrite. You're being stupid, LeBron. You're overlooking the obvious stuff that impacts the black community and Black Lives Matter while you're pushing a narrative that is not true. You're deceiving people. When I was growing up in the inner city of Youngstown and would walk out my house, I was not looking around for some white guys running up on me and be like, there he is. I was worried about other black gang members around the, the city, drug dealers, being caught in the crossfire or something. I wasn't worried about white men hunting us every single day. So this man throws that statement out there, ignorantly. And then he goes on to say, can't even go for a damn job, job, man. Well, now we got more data that came out, and it doesn't appear that the man was just out strolling and taking a job, unless he just stopped for whatever reason to go in and investigate a, a house that was under construction. Now, I know what I'm jogging. You know, my thought, ain't, yeah, let me go ahead and see what's in there. Um... So to downplay it and make it seem like that was it, it was that simple. And see, once again, I'm not saying what they did was right or wrong. I'm talking about waiting before you weigh in like this and make statements like this. So now in the image of the people, this man was just jogging like, mind my own business. And what the heck? Why are these people rolling up on me? This is crazy. Same thing with Michael Brown. First thing they all went with was hands up, don't shoot. People on CNN, we're with you, Michael. Hands up, don't shoot. And come to find out, Mike Brown wasn't just an innocent guy on his knees going, please, please, officer, don't kill me. My hands is up and I'm complicit. And they just shot him for no reason. See, so before you just jump on to that type of narrative, which I admit, from first sight, the first video that came out, did look like that's what he was doing, but jogging. And when I weighed in on it during my live show, I said, it looks pretty bad up front, but let's wait and see what happens. Now, we got more information that came out. Now, see, this is a reasonable thinker. Just because, though, he wasn't, say, just jogging, and they did show that he went into another house and peeped around and all that stuff, still doesn't justify or mean that these guys should have ended his life in the way that it happened. But it also eliminates this narrative that he was simply just jogging. And there's absolutely no reason whatsoever that these men thought he was doing something nefarious. OK, so there's more evidence you got to take into consideration now to get to a, a, a conclusion. But here's where it gets ugly. The media has gotten involved and this has become politicized. Now, what I don't like. Is when politicians like Joe Biden, when politicians like the Atlanta, uh, uh, I guess, mayor st talks about this is because a result of Donald Trump's rhetoric is coming out of the White House. Now, I'm saying, see, there you go again. You're adding to the problem and not the solution. You're not allowing people to look at this subjectively and say, let's take cases like this case by case instead of blanketly saying that this is an epidemic and also I'm going to slide in that it's probably coming from Trump, okay? We know exactly the motivation and the heart of these white men. They were sitting back like, since Trump got in the office, man, he done gave us a license to kill blacks. Let's do it, man. I, hey, look, there's one running right now. Let's go get him, okay? Because now we hear that there was a call made and somebody yelled at him while he was coming out the house, I guess, and he took off running. Now, that running, when we first looked at the video, we only saw him running in the car 
pulls in front of him. But now, you know, we find out that maybe he wasn't just jogging. Maybe he was running because somebody yelled at him for being in the house. So there's more information being added. Now, do I feel that they should have just jumped into action to try to get involved, um, which resulted in the worst possible situation? Um, I don't think they used a lot of wisdom with that because obviously there was nothing in the house. The, in the, the camera inside the house showed nothing really. And secondly, when he took off running, unless he's running down the street with a flat screen on him or, you know, a safe under his arm or something like that. My question is, OK, just because he went into an empty house and snooped around, does that mean I should endanger either him or myself by engaging this man? See, this is where the wisdom kicks in, because now if I'm those two in the truck, I don't know what this guy has on him. I don't know if he's running with the gun or not. Now, here I am grabbing my gun, which probably going to make me a little more bolder to engage him when I have a gun. All right. I'm going up there like, well, just in case some trouble happens, I put a cap in this dude. So they rush up on this dude, not knowing if he has a gun or not. Now, to just suggest that they just decided we're going to go ahead and hunt down this dude and, and shoot him because we just hate black people is a little far fetched while filming it. All right. To suggest that this was a full blown murder or assassination or sniping then you would have to also use some reasoning skills. Why would I even try to engage this man? I'm in the truck. I could have ran the guy over or I could have just rolled up and had the dude in the back just shooting. But instead, for some reason, I get out the truck and confront the man and it turns into a tussle, which on his part, I probably would have been concerned too if I did exactly what he did, went into the house, looked around, okay, all right, you know, and I run up the street because somebody said, get out of there. And then two guys in a pickup pull up and I see a gun. Either I'm going to take off running in the opposite direction or I'm probably going to say, let me try to get this gun. So now you got two situations happening that probably could have been avoided if these two would have just simply said, all right, he's already fleeing. Let me call the police and say, yeah, this dude uh, just came out of a house. He's running up the street. I don't know what he was doing in there. Could you send a squad car? But instead, they want to be heroes, I guess. Now, is it racist? Would they have done the same thing if the guy was white? We don't know. We don't know. But we also don't know that they did it solely because he was black. You can only infer these things and go off of the facts. But here's where it gets ugly. Because when the media gets involved and when you get entertainers weighing in on it, where LeBron James says, like, what the F, man, are you kidding me? No, man. Uh, for, I don't know, he just put FR, I don't know what acronyms mean, something. Are you kidding me? He says, I'm sorry, Ahmad, rest in paradise, and my prayers and blessings sent to the, I guess, the family that get, it gets cut off. Now, when you have this type of stuff come out, um, this right here muddies the water. It destroys reasoning. It destroys logic. It destroys facts and data. It causes people to be divided based on all these just accusations that we don't know if this is the truth or not. So let's be sober minded and, and approach this the right way. Because see, when I start feeling like there are entities that uses this type of stuff for political gain, now I start questioning everything I hear. Because it's interesting how they will blow up a scenario like this and report on this and throw in, this is absolutely a murder and it's racist. But then when you get cases like this, gunman 29 found dead after killing man 86 and his wife 85 at Delaware, Delaware Veterans Ceremony. The couples were at Delaware, Delaware Veterans Memorial uh, Cemetery, Cemetery in uh and bear on Friday morning when they were shot. Their names have not yet been released. Says the wife was pronounced dead at the scene. Her husband died in the hospital. Uh, police later identified the shooter as Sheldon C. Francis, 29, um, of Middletown. He was found dead from a gunshot wound a few hours later in the wooded area. It is not yet known if the gunman knew his victims. So these two elderly white folks were minding their business, and from distance, not running up on them, none of that, this man sniped both of them. 
killed him. It wasn't like all over the news, none of that stuff. And when you start not reporting all of the real data that shows how crime looks when it comes down to black men um, versus white men and who kills more, but you get LeBron and people like that coming out saying that men are hunted constantly, but the data shows that more black men kill white men than white men killing black men. And I'm thinking, well, where's the fair balance in that, LeBron? Are you saying, well, I must admit, we do be killing some white folks too. I guess that's okay. It's for all the years of atrocity and slavery. It's just payback. So shut your mouths while when black people break the law and kill folks, it's probably just reparations. Since we ain't got our 40 acres in the mill, we should be able to kill white people too and not be held accountable. Um, so they go all the way over the top when this happens to a black man. I'm not saying it's right what happened to the man, but don't try to blame racism on every black killer or inflate the numbers to dramatize this and stir up more division and hatred in our country. Be fair and balanced. And also, I need to see the same moral outrage as you look at the stats of black on black crime, LeBron and all the rest of the people weighing in on this, this making it seem like racism and white men hunting black men is the number one danger to black men. That is not true. So do I think this could have been avoided from what I can see, unless more evidence comes out, it could have been avoided. Now, does that also mean that these over-the-top statements are true, meaning black men hunted every day. These men were sitting there drinking beer on the porch with the shotguns. They saw this black guy, black guy just jogging up the street, minding his own business. They say, you know what, man, go get my, my squirrely gun, my 357. We're going to kill this boy. We're going to kill him. Uh, but before we just shoot him, we're going to jump out the truck and engage him. You know, instead of just saying, you know what, save the bullets, run him over in our pickup. You know, so obviously they had some other things in their head contributing to the way that they engage this man versus just the pure motive of saying, let's just go and assassinate this dude. Because an assassin doesn't want to endanger themselves close quarters. He could have did that in the back of the truck. See, this is the stuff that none of these idiots that's weighing in trying to push a narrative don't even consider. So once again, looking at all of this, abstracting all of the garbage coming in is a fair and balanced way to view this and not using this to politicize it and paint this narrative that black men, the biggest threat and danger to us are white men just hunting us. Because if that's the case, we definitely need to be on lockdown then. We need to be sitting in the houses scared to go out. But I don't think that's the case. And I'm not seeing 50, 60 black men a day being killed by these so-called white men just running around hunting. I see a lot of them being killed by other black men. And LeBron doesn't tweet about it. That's my problem with this. Joe Biden doesn't say anything about that. Nancy and the rest of them, probably because the majority of these black on black crimes are taking place in democratically ran cities. And they probably don't want to highlight the fact that they can't govern and deal with the crime in their city. So your black on uh, Black Lives Matter outrage cannot be limited to these sporadic cases like this that pops up every blue moon, but ignored when it comes down to all the black men that are killed every year by other black people. Going to the hood of Chicago, St. Louis, Youngstown, and ask them, do you wake up and go outside and fear that white men are going to ride through your neighborhood, hunt you down, hang you, shoot you, assassinate you? Or do you worry about guys that you see sometimes on the corner, went to school with, or know that might end up shooting you? And I guarantee you, the majority of them would say, yeah, I worry about other black folks. Then these white men is out hunting us. And that is why I got a problem with this. Now, I'm sure as the week's going on, we're going to hear more garbage coming out, uh, rhetoric. But we're also going to hear more facts and details coming out. That's when we make a conclusion. And if it comes down to the fact that these men murdered this dude for no reason whatsoever, I will be the first to say, let's go protest if justice isn't, is, isn't found. But I'm also reserving my judgment 
just in case some other facts come out to show that this man contributed to this. Now, even if he did, once again, like I said, I don't think it was wise for these men to engage him like this. It could have been avoided. If you didn't see this man running down the street with obvious stuff that he robbed from this house, then you probably could have let the dude run out the neighborhood and maybe video, tape him, something, take a picture of who he is. There's so many other ways to handle this. But sometimes when you are been watching too much Charles Bronson, um, you know, Death Wish, you want to be a vigilante or something, this type of attitude and engagement was unnecessary in my opinion and could have led to an unnecessary scenario. That's all I'm saying. So you've been listening to Kevin and Kevin's Corner. I tried to be reasonable when I approach these things um, because right now it's all over the place. You got folks mad. You got even conservatives divided. Some are saying, you're crazy, man. They killed this black guy. And others are saying, man, that dude brought it on himself. It's all over the place. So I'm just saying, let's wait it out and see. And don't get caught up in the hoopla, which is the media and stupid folks like LeBron James weighing in on it as he sits in his mansion talking about black men are being hunting every day. But I get out there and I make my money by the majority of white people who buy my jerseys and, and, and show up at my games and stuff. And not once, not once nobody took a shot at me while I was on the court. Nothing, nothing. They're not parked outside my crib like, we got us a rich one. You hear that, Earl? When he comes out, we're going to get him. We're going to get him. He counts for a lot of points, see, if you just shoot one of them regular black folks. You know, it's like two or three points. You get a big one like that one, man, it's like a thousand points. We're going to be ahead when it come down to killing these white, these black men. Ahead, man. Anyway, God bless. See y'all next time in Kevin's Corner. Don't forget to hit like, share, subscribe, and the notification button. Um, make sure you're still notified. Your notifications are set to all. Make sure that you are still subscribed as well. Uh, feel free to donate to Kevin and Kevin's Corner. There's links below the video to do that. Um, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And uh, check out Extreme Tees. Put Kevin in the promo code. The link's below. You'll get a 20% discount. God bless. See you next time in Kevin's Corner.